Hello everyone and thank you much for watching. This is me Mr. P. And this is another episode in a Proxmox home server series. In this video I will show you how you can self-host the home lab dashboard. And what I mean by home lab dashboard is basically a web service or technically it's a web page where you can list all your all your home server stuff, all your services and everything that you're self-hosting at home to be listed in one place and it's much easier to access. This is the uh, Dashi demo home lab page and this is basically how this can be laid out. There's options to change the uh, theme and layout and etc. And all this I will show you how you can self-host this, how you need to add the icons and etc. and all this basic to work. So uh, where we left off from last video or most well, video before this one is that I still have my Cloudflare and NAS containers and this is my Docker virtual machine running uh, Ubuntu server with the Docker running inside and this is the Portana where I manage all my Docker containers. Since last video I started two new services a file browser and Plex just to use them as an example in this video adding them into a dashy dashboard. With, a da with a, any kind of dashboard would it be Flame or Hamdel or Homer or Dashy? there's quite a lot of them out there you need to um, I, my suggestion would be to, for you to start setting up dashboard as soon as possibly as soon as you can because let's say if you have I would say right now it's only three containers you have 30 containers running adding all of them in one go could be a very tedious job a lot of copying and pasting so as soon as you have a chance start the dashboard going the one that you which fancy the one is the cup of tea for you and just start adding one by one as soon as you have a new service running. So let's begin setting this up. If I click on the Portana and then select stacks here on the left hand side, I click add a new stack. And right now we need to add the um, Docker compose file. First of all, give it a name. Dash dash yt will be my name for this dashboard. You can't add the capital letters. As you can see, the Portana is complaining. So I'm just gonna use dash dash yt. And now we need to add the Docker YML file. The Dashi website itself uh, suggests or provides you with the uh, Docker run command, which you can use that to run the Dashi environment, or it gives you um, uh, the Docker compose file, which is, uh, I prefer to use Docker compose files because it's much easier for you to manipulate stuff in the future if you wanna change something. In my case, I'm not gonna use the provided one, I'm just gonna copy and paste the one that I'm currently using from my production Proxmox server. And I'm just gonna do a bit of edits here. First of all, basically, this, like I said, this is from my Pro Proxmox production. It's just, um, let's edit some of the things. First of all, um, port I selected to be 8181 on my main Proxmox because 8080 was already used and I don't wanna run on, on port 80. So I can leave that if I want, or I can change to something that is free. For example, if you go back, I'm just gonna duplicate the tab and go back to my container list. The ports, for example, this one, it says 4433 map to 8080. That means that left number is a port on the host and right number is a port on a Docker container. You can have million containers running with all having 8080 port, but the numbers on the left needs to be unique. I can't have another container running with, for example, the port 9000 being on the left hand side. So 4433 is used and 900 is used. So 8080 is free and that's what we're gonna use. So I can change that from 81, 81 to 80, 80. And now uh, let's make sure that volumes are mapped correctly. Let's open the terminal and log in into, the, uh, into my Docker VM. And I believe this is IP address. Here we go. So right now inside here, I have the Docker folder. Let's navigate inside the Docker. And in here I have file browser, Docker container volume, Plex volume, Plex Docker container volume, and Portana. Let's create a folder called Dashi. So there is a folder Dashi. Let's change the directory to Dashi. And now, according to YML file, I need to have the comp file created. So to create a comp file, you can obviously write nano and then comp and, and leave it like this, or you can write touch conf.yml and it's just gonna create a blank file with this name. So while we're still at the file, let's carry on setting up the file. If I go back to quick start, if I scroll down, 
the Dashi um, quick start guide gives you um, a starting point of the configuration file. You need to have this kind of layout in configuration file for Dashi to work properly. So that's what we're going to do now. We're just going to amend conf yml file, paste that in, control O to write, enter to confirm, control X to close. And while I'm here, I like to make a copy of this file just in case if I start messing around, I do have the starting point. So CP command is copy. This is the original file. This is the destination. And if I do a copy, as you can see right now, I have two files. One is original and one is a BK, stands for backup. The next thing, I go back to my portainer. And right now I need to map the, the location of the icons. Icons, uh, Dashi comes with no icons at all, so you need to uh, cl uh, clone the repository that has a lot of icons. For this, I'm going to use this repository by walk X code, and there is a dashboard icons repo. There is a lot and a lot of icons. I'm not going to open this folder because like a thousand, there is thousands of files in there. It's going to take forever to load. So instead, I'm just going to click code and then copy this command here. Go back inside my terminal. And while I am inside the folder Dashi, I will write git clone. First of all, let's check if git is installed. So if we type git and press enter, if you don't see all that, or you will see something like uh, git is not found, please apt install git. You run the command apt install git and then run the git command. So git clone, git space clone space, and I give the URL. Git repositories always ends with a GIT ending. So that means the repo will be cloned. Press enter. And as you can see right now, is 1,500 files downloaded, nearly 9,000 files downloaded, 300 files getting downloaded. So there's a lot and a lot of files. It's almost 100 megs in icons, 120 megabytes in icons. How much is going to be? Let's have a look. 140 megabytes of icons. So that's been downloaded or cloned. So right now there is a folder called Dashboard Icons. So basically this is the repo office. So as you can see, this is and all this content, what you see here. It's right now being cloned into my Docker, Docker VM. So I have the config, MD, contribution, read, uh, icons, uh, text, license, entity. Most important one for me is PNG. So if I CD into PNG and I would do list, there's all the icons that you, you will use. Basically, it's all possibly imaginable um, home server thing that you can self-host is, is here. So let's double check if it's um, it has the Plex and file server icons. The command that I'm running is ls, which means list the file. So if I'm just going to write ls and press enter, it's just going to list the content of this folder. But if I write ls and then do the vertical line and grab Plex, that means list the files, but only display or only filter or only I'm interested in the files that starts with the word Plex. Enter. And I have Plex Alt Light, Plex Alt PNG, Plex Drive, Plex PNG, that's the one we're going to use, and Plex Request. The same with the file browser. There's only one here, so that's what we're going to use. So that is here. So next, I'm going to write PWD, Print Work Directory. Copy all that and press Copy. Go back in my portainer and just make sure that this is exactly what it's supposed to. I'm just going to delete all that all the way up to up to semicolon and paste that in. So right now I map my volumes. I'm telling the Docker container, dashy Docker container that it's config file actually is here and icons folders, uh, icons are gonna be found here. There is two versions of icons. If I'll go back here and I'll show you that PNG. There is SVG as well. I'm gonna use just PNG files. SVG, if you want, you can change that to SVG and obviously you need to change here the end bit to say SVG to map correctly. So if everything is fine, it looks okay. I'm going to scroll all the way down and press deploy the stack. Press enter. And if I done ever enter, press it with the mouse button. And if I done everything correctly, I should see here a green message shows up saying stack has been deployed or stack is running something in this kind of lines. So let's wait for this green message to show up and the waiting time depends on how big the Docker image is, how big this dashy uh, Lisi 93 dashy image is. So it might take seconds. It sometimes might take up to a minute. Success. Stack successfully deployed. 
if I click on the stack name dash dash yt, I can see that it's running, it's starting. If I click on this icon here, which opens the logs, I don't see any errors messages. Everything it says using dashy, everything is happy, life is good. Let's go back to stacks, then dashy. And now if I go and click on the publish ports, 8080, Here's the dashi, and as you can see, there is already populated with two boxes and two services in each. This is the config file. Now we can amend this config file in two ways. We can obviously go via terminal, navigate to the folder where there is a config file and amend this config file and change what we want. We need to write all this. this the, all this represents one item. So you need to write all these lines to make sure that it's all working. Actually, this represents one item. And this represents second item. So you can amend all in here, or we can go via web term, web GUI and amend in here. So let's start by, first of all, if I click on a wrench, update configurations, there's a lot of things you can change. You can change a uh, configuration from here. You can edit your custom um, CSS styling. You can amend, uh, enable cloud sync to sync your um, configurations uh, to the cloud. There is an um, option for you to see the JSON data output format in the uh, this kind of style you can amend it in here custom styles goes here cloud backup if you want to set it up we're going to click this icon here in the middle uh, below the config and right now we are in the edit mode first of all i'm just going to quickly right click on all of them and remove 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 i don't want you here remove this remove this remove this so i'm back to a blank page and now if i click add new section. So let's write in here services. This is going to be my first section. I can um, add the icon, the standard uh, HTML code icon, but I'm just going to leave that blank because I am not using them. And now I'll just scroll down and click save. So we go. There's a option called sections or block box called sections. Add box called services, not sections. Add new item. Let's call this Plex. Uh, Plex. Description. Plex Media Server. Icon. So right now, how the icon is going to be mapped. If I go back to my portainer, click on a dashi and click edit the YML file, I can see that it's going to look for a folder called icons, which actually is mapped into PNG. So to map the icon correctly, I need to start icon location with the word icons and then just guess it the name. Or if you already know the name, just enter the name. I'm just going to, I know that this Plex PNG. Now the service URL, I'm going to enter my IP address for this Docker container, followed by 32400, which is 32400 is the default Plex port. Open method, I want to open a new tab. And from more fields option, there's a lot of things you can add in here. One of them I'm always using is called enable status check. I click on this, I'm going to say true. What that will do, the dash will monitor this Docker container uptime and it will show you green bubble or red bubble depending on if it's up or down or it's like working or not. Click save and there you go Plex with the green bubble showing up. It means that the Plex is running. Next thing, let's quickly add the file browser. File browser. Description will be remote file access. Icon is going to be icon slash file browser.png. Service is going to be uh, like this my IP address for Docker container, and I think it was 4433. Open method is new, and I want to check uptime and click save. So now I have two of them. I have the Plex and I have a file browser. I'm going to create a new section here. I'm going to call this Proxmox Home Server. I don't need any icons. I'm going to click save, and in here is going to be PVE Proxmox. Icon is going to be icons proxmox.png and now instead of entering the local IP address I can do the actual domain which is going to be yt-pve Mr. P cloud and I want to check the uptime true yes scroll down click save here's my proxmox and next one I want to add portainer uh, docker station icon is going to be icons portainer.png Service, again, I can use an actual domain instead of a local address. Portainer, Mr. P Cloud, Dr. K. Open in a new tab. 
check the services. Yep, yep, done, save, done. That's it. If I click on the save to disk, that is it. Configuration has been saved. If I go back right now to my terminal and open the same config file, as you can see right now, it's created automatically all these sections. So I have Plex section showing up here. I have the file browser section. Then there is a new box named Proxmox Home Server, display data. And if I scroll down, there is my Portana. And somewhere here, there's my Proxmox showing up. Proxmox actually left with the uh, space and after. So I just can't, can't delete here, right? Okay, close. And it's gonna be reflected here on, on this page. Now the layout, as you can see, I have just like boxy kind of layout. I can change them to be like this. Which one is just, is your cup of tea? Which one you fancy? I'm gonna probably leave like this. It's gonna give me name and a quick or oh, short description. So Plex, Plex Media Server, File Browser, Remote File Access, PVE is Proxmox, Protein is Docker Station. And I can change the, the uh, theme. Okay, this is definitely gonna burn your eyes. This one is quite, looks okay. Not, thank you. Very colorful. What this one, it says Matrix. Okay, if this is, you fancy this, you can leave it that. Uh, material black. Okay, this is, uh, do you have any more, any more something dark, uh, more like a um, dark mode kind of thing? Definitely not this, not, okay. Material. And what about default? Yeah, default will be fine. So that's it, that's it, uh, set up. I have a couple of services running here, all great. There is option here to change, or there is an option to change this title at the top. So if I'm gonna click edit mode, it goes all into edit mode and I click on here. I can change the home lab to say Proxmox home, okay, server series. Please don't forget to subscribe, smiley face. Save and here we go. This is changed and there is option to add uh, some icons here on the right hand side as well. So I'm going to click on this and I'll say navigation links. Press on here. I'm going to say Mr. P channel, for example, and I'm just going to quickly copy the link, add that in, save, and there's a channel icon or channel button shows up here. I'll click save to disk. And now if I click on this, it will open my channel. If I click on this, it opens the Proxmox opens Portana, opens File Browser, and opens Plex. Here we go, and the dashboard is created. There is options to add widgets, which I will show you in an upcoming video, but there is options to add widgets, and there is a lot of them. This is a list of all the widgets. You can add clock, uh, public IP address to be displayed, news, uh, and R RSS feed you can uh, push into here. You can display the server statistics, like you see, as you see PyHole, you can do Nextcloud, and gluten VPN information, um, CP usage, network traffic, temperatures, etc. In the next video, I'll show you how you can add these kind of things into your Dayashi dashboard. That is it. Thank you very much for watching. You, oh, no, no, this is not this one. Here we go. We have a Dashi dashboard running. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I suggest to create a dashboard at the start of your home lab project, because when you have a lot of things going on, it's gonna be uh, just a lot of, a bit of tedious job just to add one by one all in one go actually to add all in one go when you have a lot of services running anyway enough yapping thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one goodbye